Monsieur le Premier ministre, cher Manuel, Monsieur le Prime Président Minister, de l'Institut, cher Enrico, President of the Monsieur l'Administrateur in Général du Conservatoire National des Arts the, et des Métiers, and General Administrator je voudrais tout d'abord remercier I would, would first of all like to Enrico de m'avoir invité. Enrico for inviting me. If he hadn't done, I would have imposed my presence here in this hall because, as you may remember, I am a founder member of the Delors Foundation, which is supported by the Luxembourg government until I left my government. Être une action caritative alors qu'il s'agit d'encourager to pay homage to Jacques Delors, who was my eminent predecessor at the head of the European Commission, and who was also my mentor. And I owe a lot to him. He took me by the hand, and he gave me the gave me an idea of what Europe was all about, and he tried to make me understand what he really wanted. Between Jacques Delors and myself, there is a, a difference, a dispute, if you like, in the, at the beginning of the 1990s. He tried to convince his future successor to take me on as vice a commission of the Commission in charge of social issues. And I didn't accept this invitation. And there's a little bit of um, regret here, a great regret for me and a little regret for Jacques. So on occasion of the 20th anniversary of the Institute, we would have to ask, where would Europe be without Jacques Delors? We know where Europe was before him, we know we owe him a lot. Without Jacques Delors, we wouldn't have the in interior market, the big market, the 500 million consumers in Europe, and citizens, of course. Without Jacques Delors, we wouldn't have the single currency, which protects us and which has protected us during the worst moments of the financial crisis. Imagine what it would have been if we hadn't the single currency when this uh, recession struck. And uh, this would have probably led to a monetary uh, war in Europe, uh, France against Germany, Germany against Spain, Italy against Spain. I went through this period where we were closed in to our European monetary systems, where every month or so, uh, the finance minister had to go to Brussels to realign the uh, currencies. Because either production in one country became more expensive and because of the uh, devaluations this, that this involved, all this is finished now. And so we owe the single currency to Jacques Delors because he presided in the Delors group in 88 with Elizabeth, I think. Because Elizabeth, you were everywhere at the time. He was the chairman of this committee, comprising many governors, and he convinced this difficult troop of people of the need of having a single currency. And it was a British uh, Minister of Finances who saved the euro because after the King Baudouin died, there was a meeting 
in Brussels les différentes monnaies, to align the different currencies. And I'm telling you this because nobody actually speaks about this. Germany and the Netherlands wanted to leave the uh, European monetary system. And myself, as a little Luxembourg citizen, we could said that we could not leave the uh, monetary system because we had the Belgian currency, the franc. And if this had taken place, uh, there would have been a, a devaluation in the uh, currency. So Kenneth Clark took the floor and said, uh, the United Kingdom will not adopt the single currency. We will adopt it one year. And if you let the Germans and the Dutch leave the European monetary system, and everything is under French command, you will never have a single currency. And because I want my grandchildren to have a single currency, I am not in agreement with what you're trying to do. The interior market, the single currency, and social dialogue. He defended this with energy and talent, and he was very adroit, very adept. It was because of his performance and because I allowed myself to claim paternity of Jacques Delors. In, when I, in the investiture, I mentioned two names, Helmut Kohl and Jacques Delors. Those who know, knew these people, these two figures, and have been inspired by these two figures, are aware of the heritage and the inspiration that these two men have been given, have given. A few weeks ago, I said before the European Parliament that Europe was in an existential crisis in certain areas. And some of the... I didn't say that Europe itself was in an existential uh, crisis, but I said only some of the countries were, and this was not noted in the press, unfortunately. But I think the moment has come and it should, where we have to be clear about a certain number of things. Very often, what we observe those people who observe us don't understand what we're doing. There are many reasons for this. But there is a misunderstanding, a basic misunderstanding. I think we should stop talking about the United States of Europe. I did it when I was young, when I was 17, 18 years old. And I said at a certain time, we mustn't uh, um, cause young pre uh, people in Europe. We shouldn't. This is not what people want. They love their homeland, their countryside, their traditions. They like the diversity of Europe. And if we did not want to give the impression of Europe becoming a, a city, a, 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 a number of states. Europe can not be built against the will of nations. These nations aren't, are something that are built to endure. Nations and states 
would be immobile without Europe, particularly on the international scene. Therefore, I thought it was good to launch a light motif. Europe has to be grand, ambitious, and, and must be modest and timid with small things. So we have to be grand with the major issues and modest with small things. So the Europe must not interfere with every single detail of uh, European citizens, but must focus on the major issues. And the major issues are quite numerous and uh, mean that we don't have to actually concentrate on the details. We are always the victims of flat growth in Europe. And we are also the victim of the consequences of the loss of investment that we have been to which we've been subjected in the last ten years. Today, the level of investment in Europe is 15% lower than it was before the crisis year of 2008. That is why the Commission has invested, the investment has launched the Strategic Investment Plan, which is working well. At the beginning, we called it the Juncker Plan because we were convinced that it was going to be a failure. But now it's working, and so they've changed the name. So it's now called the Strategic Investment Fund, but it's the same plan, and it's working. Because for we have mobilized 315 billion in investment. And by reducing public expenditure, and we have uh, given the task of reducing uh, expenditure to the BCU because a banker is much more likely to appreciate value and yield. We have mobilized 130 billion investment for infrastructure projects, 300,000 small and medium-sized enterprises have access to this fund. France is the leading beneficiary of this plan. And we have just decided to double the money to bring this up to 630 billion. And we are also going to raise 500 billion in investment between now and 2020. And I think this is the right way to go ahead. Our first assessment of the plan means that we are going to focus our interest on companies in all countries, in the 15 more richest, the richest companies uh, benefit from this. And we want to change this. Europe is a question of values. I will not dwell on all the European values, but some of these are really essential. Europe must restart to respect the state of law. The Union is based on law. Certain member states today no longer respect European standards, and this is very sad. The Council of Ministers, if these rules that are democratically set are no longer uh, respected by the member states, by all the different uh, players, 
Les principes du traité, and nous ne we plus will agir. no longer know how to act. If a, a member state is not in agreement with a decision and they organize a referendum to uh, counter the rules, we will never succeed in managing and governing the European Union in the best way possible. I know there may be a need to have consultations on constitutional issues, but not on details. For the 12 months to come, we have to make a certain number of very important decisions. It is now that we can do it and make sure that Europe is on the rise again. I've claimed this in a broader context. We have to modernize our economy. Uh, I give great importance indeed to the interior market, to the digital interior market. Com the Commission came up with proposals, and I would like the Council and Parliament to adopt them uh, before uh, the fall uh, 2017, at the latest. You know, digital is a big issue. And if we do not act on this ambition, which is the ambition of all planète, uh, people on this planet, then we will become losers. But if we do implement everything that has been planned within the digital voilà Europe program, then we will be able to generate 450 billion added value per year, plus the creation of 3.6 million of new jobs. Same thing for what we call the uh, Union of uh, the Energy. The energy. The if we do implement the Commission's proposals voilà entirely, then the European consumers will save 40 billion euros Donc, every year. So, digital technologies, energy, the investment plan, all these elements make sense Les politiques when résolument vers la we keep in mind that the uh, work and growth-oriented policies must be part of this virtual circle in making a sounder finance, uh, public finances, also reforming, pr providing the proper structural <coughs> reforms, and therefore uh, making investments for the sake of employment and for uh, the young people and, of course, for the future of our continent. Same that works for the Europe of Defence. I'm not an expert. Since the Luxembourgish army in history uh, has had no decisive impact on the future of the world, even though we have no ambitions, you know. I mean, the Luxembourgish army is 771 soldiers uh, in total, so you see it's quite uh, something that you can handle. But we must work and create a Europe of defence. I say it everywhere I go in Europe. We cannot leave France alone with the duty to save the honour of Europe. If France had not gone to Mali and elsewhere, Europe would not even have existed. So Europe existed thanks to France alone. And we must make collective efforts in terms of defence. That's the reason why I suggested the creation of headquarters in Brussels as a first step. We're now considering the uh, real economy, you know, public markets regarding the defence do cost uh, losses up to 100 billion nationally. We spend 100 billion because we're not able to, to, we're not able to reconcile airports in terms of the military material supply. So we need to add an additional touch of efficiency for the defense of the EU, and we'll have to do it. Terrorism now. Le terrorisme ne connaît pas terrorism de has no borders. Indeed, so Europe dis, must act on it. Un brillant ancien yeah, ministre de, 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 de l'Intérieur. minister of the Interior. And the European Commission came up with proposals here in them. Some of them have been implemented, le like des données, the European uh, Data of Travelers, 
a database which refer, uh, to which the uh, French government has insisted on. We have reinforced the European legislation in terms of uh, terrorism funding. We have made changes uh, to the law in terms of the detention of arms and explosive materials. Fifteen days after the Paris attacks, the European Commission came up with a reform on legislation on the uh, trade of arms, and it took eight months to the Council to ratify what was described back them Absolute as an ultimate emergency and the fault. France. France is not to be blamed. So all proposals made by uh, the European Commission must indeed be uh, uh, enshrined uh, in the uh, official journal of the European Community, and I am convinced that we will make huge progress on this if we are able to uh, ensure a greater cooperation between the intelligence services and police services. Some progress has been made already for the uh, European warrant mandate. It took a few days for, the, uh, for, for, for one of the uh, terrorists to be uh, uh, sent to France, whereas it would take years. In the past, if a, a terrorist uh, uh, seeking refuge in the UK would have been uh, sent out to France, it only took this time 10 days. So this is an effort we must uh, continue. And then there's a social dimension of the internal market, which seems quite poor and non-existent indeed. Well, it does exist because we have directive on the health and safety at work, uh, the Delors directive or Papandre directive and others when the uh, interior single market was created. But other things must be achieved and we must listen to the people. Unfortunately, they do not claim uh, the same thing everywhere. But we suggested to reform the uh, reform on the workers' development because I believe that one of the principles must enter into force uh, in all social legislation. One wage for one work in everywhere. So I'd like the council to adopt this reform quite rapidly. That being mistaken uh, by uh, the 11 national parliaments who said that the equipment of workers was a matter of subsidiarity but not a matter of a joint action. This joint action must be strong on the other hand so that we can end this social dumping which has fragilized the relations and relations, working relations, and therefore we will do what must be done. And then there is the Brexit, because we will not start negotiating before receiving the farewell letter from the British government. I'm happy that my friend Michel Barnier is here today because uh, he is the uh, negotiator in, in charge of the Brexit on behalf of the Commission with the UK. And without getting into uh, details, of course, of what I'm discussing this hard, about this hard, soft bre Brexit, I don't know what it really means, but uh, it is quite obvious that if the UK must have free access to the single market, all the rules, all the uh, freedoms about this market must entirely be respected. The, no way you're partly in, partly out. By destroying, by your foot out, everything that has been done, but uh, getting in to reap the fruit of what uh, works and what should work for the UK as well. That's for, on this particular issue, we must be extremely firm. There's no compromise. And I see what is happening in the UK. The UK government, you know. Uh, 
sont déjà en train d'expliquer uh, aux investisseurs du continent que, oui, continent il faudra tout de même que les relations soient les plus paisibles possibles. Oui, qu'elles soient les plus possible. amicales well, possibles. Yes, oui, mais il ne faudrait possible. pas of que des pans But entiers de l'industrie européenne s'engagent dans des pourparlers on secret negotiations. Uh, voilà, rideau tiré you know, avec, uh, uh, les envois du gouvernement behind closed doors. Uh, in année, order Michel, to uh, come and see Conseil, Michel and the European Commission and the Council in a year from now to say, well, you know, there's nothing else to do. We'll have to negotiate with the UK and, and maintain, of course, the free circulation of people, but it was not a question considering all of the great bonuses to be had in terms of trade relations with the UK. If we Start le marché intérieur uh, en really mettant à la libre disposition de l'arbitre uh, et du bon vouloir uh, d'un État qui a décidé de quitter. And, and depending on the will of the living state, that will be the end of Europe, that will be the end of its guiding principle of the Europe, everything that makes its nobleness and success. Success of Europe, of course, implies that we do seize opportunities Le commerce extérieur. Uh, in terms of uh, Moi, je, je uh, international trade. Uh, I'm not an advocate of uh, the Transatlantic Treaty. Nous sommes en train de finaliser We're un now finalizing the Canada, trade agreement with Canada, bon which is a good agreement, the, the best ever. Nous avons in fact. We have 140 agreements avec, uh, uh, with the rest of the world. Cette fois La now, pension du grand public est braquée sur cette affaire the du euh, traité transatlantique avec les États-Unis. Uh, L'Europe est en train de négocier, mais l'Europe ne va pas s'agenouiller devant les Américains. Get on its knees in front of the uh, United States. We want to stand for the principle that make Europe successful. And let me say that we should not be separate from the rest of the world. Pascal Lamy, who was what he was and who remained who he is, <laughs> but for each billion euro added to the volume of our international trade, that is to say the trade with the others, creates 14,000 jobs in Europe. We just celebrated the 25th anniversary of the trade agreement with South Korea. Le volume the volume figures of this, the trade with South Korea is 15 billion. This agreement we've been able to create in Europe over 200,000 jobs. So therefore we should not pretend uh, that uh, trade agreements would be just a gift for uh, uh, big uh, groups. They have uh, social impacts. That are quite obvious. So these are a few comments, ladies and gentlemen, that I wanted to share with you. But of course, I'd like to add that young people should keep faith, keep hope. We should see Europe as it is. It is the smallest continent, whereas it is thought big. It is a continent that accounts for 25% of the G global GDP. 80% of the global added value is originated outside the boundaries of the EU. So these 25% will, will be reduced down to 15%, and and there is a demographic decline. At the beginning of the past century, the Europeans accounted for 25% of the global population. At the end of this century, there will be 4% of Europeans out of 10 billion of human beings. So the one who starts explaining when the right time comes, you know, like presidential campaigns, that it is the time to recreate a small national division instead of working hand in hand in order to exist in the world. And that means standing for our values, the world we are standing for the position of Europe, not against the others, but just asserting our own identity. That person would be greatly mistaken. We should not believe that the, the bright days of Europe are behind us. We should not lose energy and, and patience. This energy, this patience, 
are what we need in order to accomplish our great ambitions. We need a lot of energy for a long road to travel. That's what we have to do.